This is an incredible boat. It's really wonderful. A well-built boat. Pretty snappy. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Hey, Randy. Captain. Hey, come on over here. I'm over here in North Weymouth. Thanks for coming down. This is a little petite one this week. Well, this is a Cal 22 we're looking at right now. And you know, I haven't seen one of these in a dog's age. You love the Cal. The Cal's are great. And look, look at these nice flat bilges. Look at this thing. But you know what? That's not what we're here for today. Oh, really? We're here once again to look at a fine example of Pearson Yachts handiwork and, and building. Should we go take a look at it? Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go take a look. Follow me on over. All right. Ah, that's a nice little surprise. We got, now, what do you think about this puppy? <laughs> this is a Pearson 385. This was designed by Bill Shaw. Bill Shaw was late coming to the Pearson factory family. Uh, Pearson, we've talked about Pearson before, but toward the end of the 50s, they scored a big one with a Triton 28. They expanded their business and they got really, really big, really fast, uh, but they ran out of money. And Grumman Allied Industries came in and they wanted to uh, have a little boat company. So they bought out uh, Pearson for $800,000. The Pearson cousins, Clinton and Everett uh, continued to work for them for a period of time and they had been using a man named Carl Alberg to design a lot of their original designs which were great boats. They had agreed to pay him a royalty of a hundred dollars per boat of his design and that was fine back when they got started. It didn't seem like much. 17 boats maybe, seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> well by the time they got rolling he was making like forty thousand a year. This is back in the early 60s or late 50s and it was getting kind of expensive. So when Grumman came in and bought them they said this guy is just he's good but he's too expensive. See if you can you know knock him down a little bit and apparently he's a tough old Scandinavian a little stubborn he said no nah, I'm not doing that so they said okay we're gonna go find somebody new Clinton or Everett I can't remember which had a friend and the friend had a friend and the friend turned out to be Bill Shaw who was designing 12 meters for Sparkman Stevens that's pretty cool getting a hold of a guy like that huh yeah so Bill came to work with him and his his concept was to build strong extremely safe and extremely robust boats it's been owned by the same owner for 36 years or so. Now this bottom, actually I'll tell you right now, believe it or not, it is still ablating, okay? Actually, it's just dry bottom paint right now. This boat's been sitting out here for about five years. Uh, the owner hoped he could throw it in every year and every year, sometimes it got, got pushed back another year. But uh, this bottom paint has just weathered off pretty much. Yep. And it's in good shape. There's not much on here. There's a, a simple coat, I think. Yeah, it doesn't look like many layers. No, I don't think so at all. Look at that. I can, I can get right down probably to almost the original <laughs> blue. The blue uh, is faded. Uh, and it would be nice to roll a, a nice dark blue on there or something to freshen it up. But just wax the top sides. This boat's been sitting here on the hard for five years, totally uncovered in New England. So she's been covered with snow. She said hurricanes blow through. That takes guts. <laughs> it does. But it, I think it, uh, it tells us something about the build of the boat, how well it was done. The keel, uh, th this is a little deeper than some of the boats. This is a little bit over five feet, about five feet, five inches, I think. So she's going to really track nicely. She didn't, she's not going to have one of those squirrely fin keels. Uh, and she's not going to be just sort of a timid, I'm going to call it a timid, uh, uh, shoal draft keel. She's got a nice deep keel to her, five five foot plus, and it's long. And that's this boat's going to track beautifully. Coming aft, we have a, a spade rudder here, hung on uh, one set of pintle and gudgeon. One <laughs> one set of gudgeons here, and she's based up here. So this thing is actually doing some work. It's not just protecting the rudder or helping the stall factor. This piece right here is going to keep it very solid, very stable. And again, we see one of these funny little notches here in the hull. And this is just a reason that you've had to do something like this to be able to have the engine uh, a little further aft than you might normally have it uh, for a good clean run coming out of here. Now above the cove stripe, I see a little bevel there. 
that was interesting. At first I thought it was an optical illusion, but they put a bevel in there. Rande reasoned that it might have something to do with a deck to a uh, hull joint, uh, and which is entirely possible. Uh, but the other nice thing about it is it's kind of like a rub rail um, built, molded into the boat that uh, will also help with any splash coming off the bow. Not a lot, it's not, it's not going to be a huge fairing to drive giant waves off, but as the wave washes up on the bow and some, along the line here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop off. Okay, let's get up topside. All right. So, Randy, come on up. Oh, thanks. Here we are. Oh, nice little step there. Yeah, nice, nice little step on the back. There's a lot of little touches on this boat that are pretty clever. Look at the length of the cockpit. We set a new cockpit length record. I think here. Kind of looks like the Irwin a little bit to me. Uh, this is sort of like the Irwin, uh, and it has a center companionway that's deep right between the seats and so forth. Part of this design, it has a nice little catch for you. So here I am up in this little pocket, and this has a dodger, full dodger that goes over. I'll be totally protected from any spray. The companionway can stay open right beside me. Food, drink can be handed up. and. I've only used half the length of this thing <laughs> at this point, but I'm really secure here. I like that. It's really wonderful. And the uh, cockpit combing height um, is also a good height. Nice wheel steering. It has a uh, autopilot drive right here, and that works. Yep, with a little motor off the side. A little motor off the side. Do you like the, the these wheel pilots? And yeah, well, they work. They work. Yeah. And and this, this isn't that big a boat that it can't drive it. If you've got a really, if this is, I don't know what the tonnage on this is, maybe 10 tons. If you had 50 or 60 tons or something, you're going to want something with powerful rams, hydraulic rams driving the rudder. Fine on here. And if you notice on the throttle, what does it say? Yeah, fast and slow. And what does it say on this side? Yeah, forward, reverse. It's and nice. everything, most of these just have two knobs. Yep. And you've got to jump on the wheel and remember which is which. <laughs> and so right now you're going to say, oh, I can go fast here, or I can go slow there, or I can shift it in reverse or come forward. So a <laughs> really small point, but kind of a nice touch. Uh, we've got some instrument pods here. I've just taken the covers off them. It's going to give you your apparent wind direction. But this is easy to get in and out of this cockpit. I like that. I'm noticing there's uh, not a lot of hinges or latches here. There are no latches. That's yeah. great. You have gotten so profoundly observant. It's only taken 46 episodes. It's unbelievable. Not one latch here. Not one hatch. So what does that mean? Probably some uh, bunks below. Could yeah. be. Yeah. Could what be. about what do we do with our sails? Do we need them? No, we've only got two. We got a jib. And we also have a stow boom. And a stow boom reels the main sole right into the boom itself. Right here, this will crank uh, the boom and roll the sail up, just, just like the, uh, the roller curtains in your bedroom. Now notice some of these lines are pretty grisly, and the owner apologizes for it. Uh, here's a halyard he just gave up on. <laughs> <laughs> it's really tired. So the halyards have been left outside. The whole boat's been outside for five years. It doesn't seem like it to me. It seems it really, really doesn't. quite clean. You would expect a lot worse out of the teak rails, the teak handrails, even the deck and so forth. That the gel coat is really held up well. This is a and a, a well-built boat. Uh, got a couple nice uh, wind uh, cowl vents there. Those look brand new. They do, don't they? Pretty snappy. There's a solar wind vent on this forward hatch, and there's one on an after hatch too, so you've always got some sort of air moving through the boat. And uh, uh, we've got a little windlass up here set up for rope. This is not really a chain windlass. There's no cat to take the chain. Yeah. You see, so uh, I imagine he may have uh, a large section of rope at the other end of this chain. And here's the switch for it. Uh, just, a a, uh, just a one-way switch? Just a one-way switch. This is going to bring it up, yeah. The, the bulwark is nice up here, too. Again, another deep bulwark. I really like bulwarks. The little perforated CNC rails are great for racing, give you a lot of places to hang stuff. You're not going to hang a lot of stuff on different parts of this boat. It's a sloop. What do we got here? Harkin. Well, Harkin roller furler and a single bow roller up there for your single anchor. All right. And this is a really nice solid uh, bow pulpit up there. Not, qu uh, not quite a uh, bow sprit, Randy, but I know, not you quite. could live up there. 
I could get in front of that. You could get further. your butt up there, I know. <laughs> Standing about as far back as you can get on this boat. <laughs> but uh, one thing that's nice here, and I, I think everybody pretty much realizes that we're going to have an aft cabin in this boat. But look at here, we still have a garage. <laughs> and there's enough room here for the Barbie, some uh, super heavy dock lines, and I think I see bits and pieces of uh, an extra anchor for stern anchoring. We've got like three little uh, round hoops over there, six, six round hoops. What are those? These are depth charges in case there's another war. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you can put your bumpers in there. Oh, okay. These are turning blocks for your Genoa sheets. So the Genoa is going to come back. Look at the length of this track on the on the uh, tow rail here. That allows you to set any any number of different size Genoas. You could put a 180 You could on there. put a 180 on there. Or even yet a high cut Yankee would still sheet back here nicely. Yep. And they come back to this turning block which is molded into the recessed little piece of cabin top here. And just a gentle little bump here. Uh, nice touches. And you want to hang on to the boat? There you go. Now, proof of the time on, on the heart is the uh, um, wind scoop here, and it has just been totally fried. Yeah, that one's not as new as the others. <laughs> no, but it's still scooping wind, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Huge Lumar 48 winches. These are bigger than a lot of the winches we see on uh, boats of this size. This, this has definitely been an upgrade, I'm sure. It clicks and sounds great. Yeah. Uh, there's also a uh, plug here for your shore power, just a single yeah. 120 uh, 30 amp plug. And underneath that... This is pretty unique. What's that? Little side deck. Oh yeah, isn't this cool? Look yeah. at this. And what's there? Ah. Two 10 pound uh, propane tanks. Nice. And the hoses is all in, are in, all in nice shape. The gauge looks like it's still workable. And you know this is going to vent right over the side. I don't want to lean over too far, but I know there's a vent down there that's going to let any excess propane flow right out of the boat. A nice cocktail table here. That folds away against the binnacle here. And there's a really nice, fresh, richy compass. No bubble. It's all good. Brande, come on down, pal. Oh, thanks. Thanks, yeah. Oh, come on down. Look at this. All right. Look at this. Uh, look at the seating here. I'm really comfortable sitting on this couch here. And there's a couch on that side. They also become berths, too. And they're going to give you a nice single. I don't think they fly out or become doubles or anything. But that's not that critical right now because we've got two more doubles on this boat. So anyway, here we are. The uh, Check out this table. There's enough room here for a really proper uh, place setting uh, if you want it. For four people, maybe even six people. But it's uh, it's really a nice setup. Now, if you notice, we got a big tree here. Our mast has stepped on the keel. Great shape down here. When you look around some of these ports, I can tell where the ports have been opened, and there's been a little bit of a moisture come in. But this is not leakage. This is more like spray. And again, these open and shut nicely. And uh, the plastic is getting a little opaque. The boat is uh, 37 years old. Look at the size of the storage back here for your libraries. You're going to have an enormous library section here. And it's got two nice storage areas right in there. This is all rugged sort of good old New England woodwork in here. Uh, there's some stains on it, but it gives it kind of a cool feeling to it. It's like it's been loved. I'm going to slide down. There's a slight decrease in the floor to give me that extra headroom. Again, six foot one here plus, six almost two, six two in the galley. And uh, the galley's kind of pulled apart. Again, we're on a winterized boat. It's been winterized for uh, five years now. Yep. But uh, three burner propane stove, oven. Again, ooh, that when one's gonna, actually been used, I think, a little bit. When are you going to bake that bread? Uh, somebody is sending us a recipe. One of our viewers is sending us a recipe, I think. So we'll, we'll have to try that out very soon. Here's more sandwich area. And then you've got storage area, you know, for all, all the extra food stuff you need. And these are pretty deep. And they're all clean and they're in, they're in nice shape. Uh, soap and water is the, is the cry here. Um, there's plate storage down here. And there's, uh, there's a little lost soul back in the corner here. <laughs> I don't know how he got back there. He really belongs somewhere else. This uh, ice box has refrigeration in it as well. It's going to keep stuff nice and cold and a lot of rooms. And what, know what else I like there? Big long shelf. 
Oh yeah. Tools, cooking tools. These are plastic drawers that have been uh, used here. And it's not fine craftsmanship, but you know what? You could take that drawer out and flush it out on the dock and really scour it, sanitize it, and they slide beautifully. Here's all our circuit breakers. Um, and you know, I've, I've always kind of complained about circuit breakers near the companionway. These are pretty well buried, so I don't see any issue with the location of the DC or the AC panels here. Nice big sink, and there's a couple of extra hoses on here, and I don't know what those do, but I have a feeling they may go to some uh, uh, purified water filter uh, setup. Not a deep sink, but it's big, so that's good. Now, on the opposite side, uh, all these Pearson guys, Sean and so forth, they're old-time sailors. And old-time sailing, you came below, the first thing you did is take off your foul weather gear and you stash it. And it's ventilated. Gets it from dripping all over the galley and the main saloon. Uh, here we are in the nav station. I lost a little bit of headroom here, uh, but I think I wouldn't be bad if I didn't have my hat on. And uh, it's just different. The floor just doesn't drop down like it does on the other side. And nice big chart table, big area. Water stained. It's been used. So, Randy, um, we've got a nice big uh, uh, storage locker here. And this is kind of nice, too. Look at the three different compartments here. These are small details, but they all add up in the end. And here is a screen piece for your uh, hatchway, for your companionway. For the Maine State bird. For the state bird, right, if you're in Maine State. This locker on this side, very nice and dry, spare goods. Tons of storage again, really nice. Um, accessible storage. Check out this hole to look at some of your plumbing under there. You can see the uh, fuel filters. I spy the engine. And you spy the engine back there? Yep. It'd be nice if you could get to it a little better, wouldn't it? It would be. Well, let me help you right out there. Ah. Come, come step this way, my boy. Now look, how is that for you? That's fantastic. And you know what? I think we can get to it from the other side as well. Yep. So, and from the back. And also, the, uh, this top is going to come off of the... Uh, this whole engine is just going to open up completely. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's really nice. It's big. It's a, a good old Perkins, I think that is, in there. Uh, 40 horse. She carries about 43 gallons of fuel, and she carries about 170 gallons of water. That's what we see all in that big round belly of hers. This could make just... Uh, doesn't tell you what's below it, but on top of it, a nice little workbench here. Okay, and you can put some tools up above it and nice sliders. Wow. Now, come on back to this uh, master cabin here. First of all, as you walk in, wow, storage, storage. And look, look how easily it accesses, right? Yep. And just more and more and more. It's more of those plastic drawers. Great idea. We don't need to see finely finished furniture inside a drawer. Um, and that pops up. Uh, shelving along here. One thing you have to think about in sailboats, and people just don't think about it enough, and that's that what happens when you go sailing, right? The boat heels over, right? So anything, anything sitting on this shelf right here is going to, if we heel over this direction, this cable is going to end up on that side of the cabin. So you really need more than just a fiddle unless you're putting pencils back here. So think about that and plan accordingly. But this gives you the space to, to do your own ingenuity uh, with, with dealing with that problem. Huge aft cabin on a 38-foot boat. I mean, really big. Look at the size of this berth here. I'll stretch out for you if you really want me to. I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I will do that. This is a nice double berth, okay? I can lie down. Once again, I'll ask for my pillow. And a glass of iced tea. Oh, wouldn't that taste good? Oh, yeah. Back here right now. <laughs> but if I'm on a mooring, look at these cool ports back here. Five ports plus a huge hatch plus whatever comes in through the, the door that you're standing in. I'm going to open this. This is a hanging locker. Now, the, it's been taken apart for the moment so you can see the transmission and the rear end of this engine. So, again, everything is accessible. And we can follow the... Uh, uh, the exhaust hoses and so forth right out behind and under, underneath where we're sitting. And there's a bar in there and you can hang your, your, your clothes and stuff in the hang, slide right in and out, uh, and it'll be perfect. But there's, there's a cover-up for that. That will not stay open like that. But isn't that nice? And 
uh, right here, look at this. Surprise, again, big head, separate stall shower. I'm almost standing up straight right now. Without my head, I'd be fine. I'd have no problems whatsoever. Um, there's a nice hamper right here. Um, we have a hand flush, uh, like so. And there's going to be storage somewhere right there. Oh, there we go. Look how dry and clean that is. It's all molded uh, pan in there. And look, look at the wood here, how tidy that is. We have a mirror so that you can take a good look at your navel. And here's a sump pump for the shower right there. Um, perfect. And a great big, I like these big lockers for, for uh, hampers. Yep. You know, just throw your clothes down there for a week and you're all set. Let them, let them ferment. Yes, let them ferment, exactly. <laughs> now, I'm going into this head here, which is almost like another room. And uh, I can stand up and shower in here. All right. Or, uh, if we're underway, I'm going to just sit down and take my shower head. Oh, I wish there was cold water coming out of here. <laughs> uh, it would be so good. It would even feel good on the stinging leg. So, Randy, I think we got one other spot down here I want to talk about. Can you believe it? A oh, bonus head. Another head. And this one, no handle, right? It's a twofer, wow. And this is a twofer too, baby. I'm going in the forward cabin here, and I'm gonna pretend I'm in the cabin. I'm gonna close this. I've got all the privacy I want, and I have my own head door. Amazing. This is an incredible boat. Look at that, isn't that nice how that goes? Really nice Nice little design. bifold door there. Now, come on around. And, oh, come in, come in, come in, come in. Look at this seat. Oh, you like it. I like this seat a lot. I'm sitting on it, it's padded, it's down low, and the shape of it fits the big captain, right? And what do we have? More plastic drawers. Storage, dry storage. Slides in, slides out. Uh, but look at this, huge hanging locker. That's a lot of blazers and gray dresses and blue dresses. And our berths, are covered with a really nice uh, fabric here. I don't know what it is. It's probably a nylon of some sort, uh, but it's very clean. Seems pretty fresh. And look at the other end of it. Square. Almost square, almost square. Maybe the second best uh, V-berth yet. Really tall. Maybe, yeah. It's look very, at the height I, above where you're going down, yeah. Huh. And I got this nice big window here, and I've got a big vent, a big, uh, hatch there. If there was any breeze today, I'd be really happy. <laughs> There's a nice mirror on the bulkhead, which is, is nice to, you know, comb your hair with, but it's also gives you a sense of more space in the room. And you can see the derayed vent uh, coming into the overhead here. Yeah. Pretty nice. All right. Well, why don't you take a little siesta? You want me out of here, I guess, right? All right. We'll see ya. Okay. Good night. Randy, <laughs> here we are again, pal. This is an easy one today. Yeah? Really easy. I, I'm, I'm shocked how easy it's gonna be. It's got everything you want, uh, and it's in 38 feet, so you've just saved two to four feet worth of dockage fees. Bill Shaw really did an exceptional job for Pearson, like so many of his other boats, and I think anybody that takes a look at this is gonna be surprised. Okay, it's rating time. It's 10 because she floats like uh, crazy. Look right. at her, that's a good floating boat. This isn't for everybody necessarily, but for an old geezer, this would be a really comfortable boat. We could motor down the whole ICW and then shoot over to the Bahamas. You might drag a tad in the Bahamas, but it would be worth it. I'm gonna give it another nine for a superb layout in this boat. I'm going another five. Wow. 24 for this puppy. <laughs> this is a great boat. And uh, I am gonna have one little caveat here. The nothing has been started on this boat for five years. Sales haven't been raised, the engine hasn't been started, the electronics haven't been turned on. To the best of the owner's memory, everything worked when he put it away. Hopefully everything was winterized and uh, cuddled up for the, <laughs> for the uh, winters. And if it all works, it's going to be great. And I'll tell you, I'll bet you dimes of dollars that if there's something on there that doesn't work when you buy the boat, I think the owner will probably fix it or make some slight concession for you. Great boat, just a super boat, really a surprise boat, a Pearson. Wonderful.
If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>